Now, the spiritual part, right? So we talked about changing physically, talked about changing mentally. The spiritual part, it is clearly time to get cracking. You know, I know people are skeptics. They judge what they do not understand. It's easier to scoff at the idea of having spiritual healing. Oh, yes, healing through prayer. To, to, you know, to, to just sort of roll your eyes and be cynical. How modern of you. You know, rather than investigate. You know, it's easy to rely exclusively on medicine to, to change, uh, than, than to do the work to change those basic themes that are in my subconscious patterns of belief. See, what I'm doing is I want to give my power away and just say, oh, doctor, do me. You know, take care of me. Doctor, fix it all for me and not have to change anything within me. Now, please hear me. I love doctors. I love Western medicine. I love Eastern medicine, North medicine, South medicine. You name it. I love it all. And I say, you should absolutely do that and also work to change your subconscious patterns. There's no conflict between medicine and metaphysical spiritual healing. There is no conflict. Ernest Holmes is very clear. Take the pill and take the prayer. Right? And, and, and it may, the, the time may come where you don't need the pill anymore and it will just naturally fall away. But we are not advocating that. That's an individual thing. So if we see life as a spiritual experience, and I, I know we all agree that it is, we can approach this idea of spiritual healing. We can have more faith in God than in all the outer phenomenon. See, when new thoughts started, medicine was pretty primitive compared to what we know now. You know, people, people were very receptive to the idea of spiritual healing. You know, the roots of our teaching go back to the Civil War times, say 1860s, say 1860s. You know, I was recently up at the, the, the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, which has just got to be the most beautiful presidential library in the world. It's just magnificent. And they had an Abraham Lincoln exhibit there. And part of that was from, from the recent movie on Abraham Lincoln. They set up the, uh, the Army Field Hospital. You know? So you could see what the doctor was working with, and they had authentic tools, you know, his instruments, lined up on a table inside this little tent. So first of all, first of all, if you were a germaphobe, just forget it, okay? <laughs> there was nothing sanitary about anything, about anything. The best you could hope for was that somebody would splash some whiskey down your throat, okay? And what all of their instruments were, I'm not exaggerating, were different size saws, OK? There was, because, because what happened in the Civil War is that people got hit with buckshot, gangrene set in, and things had to be amputated, right? So you could see there were big saws for big bones and little saws for, now I got to tell you, if I was in the Civil War and somebody came at me with a hacksaw, I think I would be really receptive to the idea of spiritual healing, wouldn't you? <laughs> You know? So this, this is the context that Mary Baker Eddy started to receive her revelations in because medicine was not as advanced as it is now. And so because medicine was so primitive, people were very receptive to the revelations that Mary Baker Eddy had in Christian science about healing through prayer. Right? And so I, I do everything in my power to change my consciousness, my conscious mind and my subjective mind, my subconscious mind. So, so let's start with God is my perfect health. God is my perfect health. That's one of those things we should be saying to ourselves all the time, all the time. Thank you, God, for a new day. God is my perfect health. Oh, thank you, God, for that great breakfast. God is my perfect health. Thank you, God, for a wonderful walk with my doggies. God is my perfect health. Say that with me a couple times. God is my perfect health. God is my perfect health. Now, Ernest Holmes in the Science of Mind textbook says that you can have what you become in consciousness. And so this is why I like to say it like this. I am the consciousness of perfect health. I am the consciousness of perfect health. Say it with me. I am the consciousness of perfect health. Again, I am the consciousness of perfect health. Thank you. So when we all uh, uh, know, you know, you know when, when everything is well in our life, in our body, in our affairs, we have to praise our health. 
See, people don't want to think about their health until there's a problem with it, right? And so that's a bad approach, okay? That, that, that is not an approach that you will thrive with because the principle is that what you take for granted diminishes. And if you take your health for granted, it will diminish. So if you have radiant good health or you have what seems like a minimum of health right now today, you want to praise what you have. Why? Because what you're grateful for increases. Right? So, so wherever you are on the spectrum with your health and well-being, you have to praise what you have so that it can increase. You know, so, so often people are taking their health for granted. L look, spiritually, health is normal. Sickness is abnormal. You know, to sickness, we give lots of attention, though. Yet, we, yet it's, it's funny to me how people seem to ignore their health for a really long time. That's backwards, right? Why? Because what you focus on increases.